Hey folks, welcome back to Honey Money S3. Today, let's talk a bit about Elon Musk because you know the previous week, we had a lot of news on Elon Musk again or maybe with Tesla. So let's just take a look at what did he say or what did he do with Tesla, right? Starting with the first piece of news whereby it created quite a big hoo-ha regarding the work from home environment. So Elon Musk wrote an email to all his employees saying that there will be no more work from home necessary from Tesla. Especially for the Tesla executives, all of them have to return to all office and clock a minimum of 40 hours per work week. It also means that if you're working from a remote location compared to where you're hired from, you have to return to where you are hired from because fundamentally you need to return to where your work is based at. And he even mentioned in the follow-up email that if you are not returning to office and did not appear at all, we will consider that you have resigned. So that is some pretty strong wording out there, right? Basically, it's telling everyone to really return to office and because work from home, I don't think Elon Musk really loves it, especially when he himself has slept on the factory floor ever since the very bad times of Tesla not making any profits. And I think he has the right to say that because he himself as the CEO has not have any privileges of working from home and he expects everyone who have the same mentality to actually come back and work in office. So just sharing my thoughts on work from home versus work from office, I know a lot of tech companies have embraced work from home. Even Twitter, right, the company that Elon Musk want to buy, have told their employees that they are allowed to work from home permanently unless they want to come back to office. So it ultimately depends on whether you are really needed physically at your job. For roles like software engineer where you can do coding with just your computer and a good internet connection, I think working remote or working from home is not an issue. You just have to make sure that your manager knows what you're up to. But fundamentally for manufacturing companies, right, where a lot of presence is needed to speak with the engineers, to speak with the project leaders and the project managers, I think work from office is is still quite relevant because everything needs to create a synergy and people tend to do well when there's physical presence within the team. So I think a lot of people have also take work from home for granted because two years ago we started the COVID-19 pandemic and I think permanent work from home is definitely not here to stay. Businesses still have to run, your retail shops still need their business and traffic going on. So even in countries like Singapore, we have all returned to office 100% unless your company specifically allow you to work from home. In fact, work from home was never a thing before COVID, right? Maybe you have some remote working, but it won't be like permanent opportunity, especially for newer employees who may not really understand the workflow yet, or they do not have seniors that they can ask physically. So it makes them very difficult to adapt to the workplace. And for countries like the United States, where different states have different income taxes, work from home will be just really confusing if you really want to file your taxes. Which state laws do you follow? low for income tax. So I think that is also a concern as well. And the other concern is that if you don't need to be physically available in your office, then the company can essentially hire a remote worker on your behalf, right? Coming from outsourced countries with low cost of living like India, like Philippines or even Malaysia. So don't be really too happy if your job allows you to work from home. Maybe it also gives the company some time to think that Maybe you are not physically required after all. They could just hire someone remote as well. So those were my thoughts on work from home. Now let's move on to the second piece of news where Elon just mentioned that they will freeze every hiring within Tesla and also cut 10% headcount from Tesla. Now this happened because Elon Musk have a super bad feeling about the economy. Maybe he's feeling really bearish about the market and economy and he don't expect the market to really do well. Now this was after the JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon mentioned that there may be an economic hurricane. Whether you will take it as a bear market or recession, both of these don't really sound good to me, especially with this kind of inflationary environment, as well as the Russia-Ukraine war still going on, hitting the supply chain crisis. In fact, if you follow Elon Musk closely enough, at the start of the year where everything seems really bullish, he mentioned that 2022 will be the year of the bear market anything will happen before 2023. And he was rather bearish at the point in time already when Tesla was still above $1,000 per stock. So I think we can all agree that Elon Musk is definitely not an idiot. He knows what he is saying, but how we interpret it is everyone's guess, right? So my thoughts on this headcount right-sizing exercise is that I think it's really aligned to his previous news of working from home policy because he don't want people to work from home and he can't really physically remove people out of their jobs. So maybe 
for people who are considering work from home and see that Tesla is not somewhere they want to be, then maybe they can start leaving the company and look for better opportunities. So that's where the headcount reduction come in. Some people will voluntarily leave, some people will be asked to leave. And it also keeps those people who are staying at Tesla really have the best interest of the company because they want to work better with others in the office, right? I think all this is just part of the grand master plan. And the fundamental thing is just to save costs because as the organization gets larger, there are actually a lot of people receiving high salaries and we call that trimming the excess fat. Some roles may be redundant as the company changes direction in terms of their business development. So that's just part of the business. And let's talk about the last piece of news, right? Elon Musk actually delayed Tesla AI Day to the end of September this year um, because he wanted to introduce the Tesla bot prototype and he said that it may be ready by then. In fact, if you look at the earlier news of Tesla and Elon Musk this year, I think the focus was really on Tesla robots, less so on the full self-driving and stuff. But will the prototype really be ready by September 30? It's really anyone's guess. I mean, Elon has not been keeping to his promises of Cybertruck actually being launched, right? He always say this year will be delayed to next year and next year will be delayed to the future year. So that's for the Cybertruck. How about the prototype of the robot? Will it be really ready by September 30? So with all that said, right, let's just do a very simple strategy of connecting the dots. What do you make of all this news? What is the conclusion that you want to take away after what Elon Musk have said about Tesla? Now, this is just my very imaginary thought, right? I just have this very wild vision that maybe Elon is preparing Tesla for the use of the robots. Because as you know, some robots can actually replace human functions. And because robots do not need to take annual leave of vacation, Vacations, robots do not fall sick and robots do not need to eat or sleep. So maybe he's cutting the headcount first so that the robots can take over the human positions. And in order to cut headcount, you can't really like announce a retrenchment exercise because you will have so much severance payments to be made and that is actually a huge cost to the company. So what do Elon Musk is going to do is that he's going to announce no more work from home so those who prefer to work from home can just leave Tesla on their own will. And it's really very difficult to fire employees, right? Especially for those loyal employees who have worked for so long within the company. So Elon needs to stand really firm on the no work from home policy and this will actually drive some people to leave Tesla. Maybe that's for the better good of the company as well. But you know the market didn't take the news too well. Tesla fall like almost 10% just after the day the news was released. But one good light coming out of this is that Elon Musk said productions and manufacturing is just going to increase. They are not going to cut headcount there. They are just going to cut those really desk bound jobs, those that are really not contributing much to the manufacturing space. And in fact, they are increasing their hourly paid workers within the manufacturing line. So I think that's at least some optimism because manufacturing is everything in Tesla, right? The more cars that they can deliver, the higher their sales revenue and the larger their profits. So yes, here are just some some of my thoughts talking to myself about the recent Tesla news. What do you think? Do you agree with what Elon Musk did? Or do you think Elon Musk is just another clown? In fact, if you like this kind of news content, you can refer to my previous video over here where I went through what were the highlights of the week when there were so many news surrounding the market. With that, thank you for watching. My name is Christopher. This is Honey Money SG, steering young adults to financial independence.